So are we learning anything in this first uh, round of agentic uh, pro prototypes that are starting to happen? Um, welcome to AI Insights with John Rose. That's what we're gonna talk about now. Um, we've talked about agents. Hopefully you understand that that term is wildly overutilized, but what the agents we're talking about are this next generation of AI, which is autonomous agents. Agents that can actually digitize a skill, operate autonomously, do work, and aren't just a tool. Um, Great, I think we all are excited about that. We all know that there, that that is kind of the next phase. It could drive tremendous productivity improvements, breakthrough approaches to AI. Um, but, you know, not a lot of people have some air time on this. We do. We, we've been working with these systems and we're starting to understand some learnings about how to actually deploy these and what the kind of architecture necessary to deliver agents into production are going to look like. And we're still pretty early, but we're at least getting to the point that our POCs are getting ready to go into production. And so let me share with you kind of three learnings that we've had. The first is... Initially, we thought we could like pick an agentic platform, like one platform to run all of our agents. And over the last six months, we've realized that's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is agents are digital skills. And our digital skills are generally tied to data in organizations. And those organizations aren't in the same place. They're not using the same systems of record. They're maybe not even in the same physical area. Some of those digital skills belong in a factory, some in the field, some in a finance organization. And so we very quickly pivoted and said, you know, if agents are digital workers, our workers aren't all in one place. So we're going to have to have multiple places to have agents run. We call those agentic platforms. We don't want an infinite number of them, but we do realize that we're going to need several of them within our organization to basically address the needs of our service organization or engineering organization. And they are, there are subtle differences. We also know that some of the work that we do at Dell that allows us to operate is not done by us. It's done by our partners. So it's perfectly okay that some of the agentic platforms aren't even ours. They are third-party ones that provide a place for us to build and operate agents that work on our behalf our partners around services and sales, et cetera. And you've seen many announcements around ISVs release agent strategies. We view those as part of an ecosystem. And so the first conclusion we had was it's going to be a federated model. You're not going to have one place to do all agents. You're going to have a collection of places to do agents, and they're going to be closer to where the work is. The second learning we had is, well, that's good. That would be chaos if we didn't do something to make it work as a system. So the second layer is about agentic interworking. You will need to define a standard about how agents in one runtime can talk to agents in another runtime. If you have a workflow that goes between an internal agentic system and an external agentic system, a third party that's part of your service workflow, you have to have a standard about authentication, authorization, how you send messages back and forth, how you share data, how you do telemetry. And as we've talked about before, we're doing work at an industry level to kind of organize a lot of these protocols, protocols like MCP and A to A and NANDA, to really start to create early standards or definitions of interworking. Long term, you will need an interworking architecture. The third thing that we're learning, though, is this is an enterprise. So even if I have a collection of kind of agentic islands that provide pools of digital workers, and even if I have the protocols, let's call it the communication network, to make them work together and be able to interact, that is not sufficient because a third thing has to be solved for, and that is you're going to need some level of single pane of glass on top of all of this. That just like most enterprise systems that are, that are distributed, you still want to be able to see them, control them, inventory them, and shape them. So a management and orchestration level uh, layer is going to emerge and is going to be necessary. Now, it isn't necessarily where the work gets done, but it does say that things like, for instance, identity. If you're going to have agents, whether they're deployed by a third party or in one of these agentic enclaves that you deploy in your various business units, it is incredibly important that the identity of those agents is under your control. That is a management orchestration layer problem. If I am sure that every agent doing work for Dell has a Dell identity, then I am in control. If I lose control of identity, then I'm, that's a third party and it's outside of my firewall and I don't know if I should trust it. Other areas, telemetry. If you have telemetry being emitted by all of your agentic systems, and the good news is we're mostly standardizing on an architecture called OTEL or open telemetry, uh, where does that telemetry go? Because if you don't have a telemetry strategy at the management and orchestration level, then you'll just have pockets of information versus being able to aggregate it and be able to see the behavior end to end. In addition to that, you, 
agents are interesting. You need to be able to catalog them. You need to be able to find them. You need to have a registry for them. You need to be able to authorize them. And so, again, three early learnings that we now are developing an architecture and starting to enforce it within Dell, and you're probably going to end up doing the same thing if you start thinking about Agentic at scale. First, you're not going to have a single platform. You're going to have a collection of platforms, some that you control, some outside. And it's important to be very prescriptive and to choose those carefully, but realize you'll have more than one. The second is those islands, if they don't talk to each other, have an inferior outcome than if they're able to collaborate. And so agentic interworking becomes even more important. And we're, while we're early, within the next three to six months, many of these protocols will standardize and at least a first version of interworking as a standard will start to materialize. And then the third is you should think about this collection of agentic islands talking to each other, not as a random collection of things, but as a system, which means management and orchestration, identity and access control needs to be something under your control and holistic. Um, you know, early learnings will tell you how it goes. Do we think this is the right strategy? We're now actually starting to implement this. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. It's a moving target, but we do think fast forward out a year from now, a properly designed agentic architecture for an enterprise in terms of infrastructure, we'll have these three layers. A federated layer of runtimes, a common way of doing interworking, and a ubiquitous management orchestration layer over whether it's internal or external agentic systems so that you can see it as a single pane of glass and control it as a system. So again, hopefully this is useful. If any of you are at this stage of trying to figure out how to implement agents at scale, these are the learnings that we're seeing today. And you know we'll obviously share more as we're moving forward. So thank you, and hopefully that's helpful.